guys, Mike here from Job Ready English here with another Pass the Interview video. Today we're going to be looking at BDO and specifically their AMP Jack assessment. And as ever I caveat that I caveat this with by saying that we try not to deal too much with specific questions, but instead we we sort of think about interviews more in a general way where we can lay out the structure and think about some frameworks. If you want to know specifically how to answer any of these questions, please check out our new interview success system course in the link below. It's been taken by lots of international students that builds on the uh, best-selling Udemy course that I put out last year called the Complete English Interview Course and has all the resources that you need to crush interviews. So please have a think about checking it out. Uh, like, comment and subscribe on this video and let us know what videos you'd like to put us up next as we go through lots of different companies and how to pass their interview. So video exam Jack assessment is again is another example of job simulations something that we saw with uh, the last video that we put out with EY and we've seen with lots of different companies and it's this kind of integrative assessment that companies are enjoying, whether it be some of them have a case study in like Deloitte, some of them would have very specific questioning like EY and they wanted the SJT or writing a business email. And here we have two different parts. So first of all, there will be a mix of SJT numerical and verbal questions. So as ever, we don't really talk that much about online test questions for this because it's all about the interviews. But what I would say is, you know, go and find an online test provider that you trust and that's of a high level of quality. We highly recommend Job Test Prep. We work with them and we use it with all of our clients. If anybody asks us what to use, we recommend them. They've got over 500 tests and over 28 years of experience and you really can't beat that and we've found them to be of the highest quality that's why we recommend them and also lots of different tests really good explanations of answers and great value for money and it's much better and more time saving than wandering around and trying to find free tests here there everywhere so really what we're concerned about today is this part this this video interview, 10 to 12 questions. Again, we see this really short time frame, 90 seconds to answer and 30 seconds to think about it. And this is this is pretty tiring. Um, you kind of 20, 25 minutes of just non-stop questions. A whole assessment's probably gonna take you about 45 minutes. We see these job simulations running on for quite an extended period of time now anywhere up to an hour, sometimes more, because they don't tend to be timed, apart from with the video interview element. So what we're really looking at here is, let's have a think about these questions and explore this a little bit and think about what we can expect. So again, I probably don't need to tell you, but if you're wondering, then you'll know what I'm gonna say. They're definitely gonna ask, why BDO and why you? Always, always. Um, you always need to be able to prepare for this question. And this is a great question to prepare for anyway. Why you and why this role? These three questions are pivotal. Yeah. In any interview they're going to come up, sometimes this is integrated into why you. It might be introduce yourself to your colleagues, tell me a little bit about yourself. This is a really good thing to do, particularly if you know that, say for example, you're gonna have a telephone interview or you're gonna have a partner interview, because it's probably the first question I'm gonna ask you, right? Maybe I read your CV, but I probably didn't. I probably scanned over it really quickly because I've just run from another meeting. I've just had four interviews back to back to back. I've just been out to have a break and drink a cup of tea. So really what you wanna be thinking about is, how can I pitch myself effectively? How can I do this sort of in two minutes or less? And if you want me to talk more about this question, how to give a really good personal introduction, uh, drop a comment down below. Just say that's something you want me to do and I'll think about putting that into one of the videos in the future. So thinking about why BDO, that's easy. So I've not, I've probably talked about it in other videos like with PwC, but you know, go and check out annual report news, Google, and you're trying to look for sort of five facts or data points. Um, that's enough, why five facts or data points? 
just because it shows that you've done your homework, you've put your research in, and also that you've, you've kind of, you've made an effort, right? And please don't answer this question in a really generic way. Rely on the fact that if you've got through to video interview, don't do yourself a disservice by being, doing really poor research. In the interview success system, I show you how to research all of these questions in like less than 20 minutes. It's super easy. And again, why this role? So we're looking at the job description and skills and experience. Yeah. So you're going to see this time and time again where there's going to be, to a certain extent, the repetitious nature of interviews, because essentially they always cover the same thing, which is motivation questions, potentially some commercial awareness, and then different types of questions, whether that be strength, competency-based questions, SJT, technical brain teasers, whatever that may be, this is really what we're looking at, yeah? So we're looking at these for motivational questions, getting those answers together, put together your script, so figure out how much, how many words you'd say in 90 seconds on average, and then script to that, because the chances are, I would say the majority of candidates that I prep, they speak faster than that. Naturally, when we feel under pressure, we'll kind of go a bit faster, like, oh, what? because you're just feeling a little bit scared and a little bit under pressure. So we know that that's going to happen. At least two, if not three of those questions, we already know what they're going to be. And the same goes time and time again for different companies and different interviews. So let's have a look at some sort of other questions. We can expect with BDO to get a mixture of strength and competency. This is relatively easy to research and to practice and I recommend that you practice these separately. I quite like the idea of like random number practice or six different questions in a row. What I do is I punch up a random number generator, generate say a list of 20 questions and then with the random number generator you just generate different numbers and you answer those questions in front of the camera. Watch yourself on the camera allow your mind to do some mental adjustment because there's going to be certain things that you think oh that was good but i'd like to change that and if you use what i like to call the rule of three you run through that three times that allows you to actually make significant changes significant improvements you can do it by yourself and also it stops you getting a bit jaded or a bit tired once you've done it three times i don't know about you but i kind of get sick of the sound of my own voice so let's think about some different types of questions which could potentially come up in BDO's interviews. Um, so let's look at some strength voice questions. What about how do you work in a group setting? This is a nice strength-based slant and a common competency question. Give me an example of your teamwork. And really what you've got to be thinking about is again, strength questions are always linked to skills. Yeah, which you know in the job description. So know the skills, know the strengths. That's really easy to put two and two together. You're gonna to make so much progress if you really thoroughly understand the job description. And when we're talking about this question about how do you work in a group setting, um, again, so we're looking for a quick answer. It's an impulse answer in a sense because it talks about the psychology of the person rather than that competency-based star breakdown. How do we, you know, how do you work in a group setting? I find that I work really well. I can get on with people well. I like to listen and learn from others. I also feel that generally I can get more done in a group setting than if I am by myself. And certainly in a professional setting, I'm always looking for chances where I can help others, where I can learn, be part of the team effort, and be constantly trying to upskill myself. So that's a really short answer, that's 30 seconds. But they're, really what they're looking for is not how do you work in a team setting? Good, bad, well, not well. They're looking for you to really understand the dynamic. So what are the constituent parts of working in a team setting? Or if you want to reframe this, what makes a good team play? What makes somebody who is, somebody who you want to sit down and work with? And you know this because you've done group work with people. If you're a student watching this right now, We've all had the guy in the team or the woman in the team who you want and the one who you don't want. Why don't you want them? Because maybe they're lazy, they don't communicate well, 
they may miss deadlines, they may be a little bit aggressive or a bit, they may be a bit insecure. So when you point out a mistake to them, they sort of deny it wildly and say, no, it's right. And you just think, oh, look, I just want to get the project done. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a personal attack on your character. So that's what we're looking at with how do you work in a group setting. Um, nice questions like, what is your work-life balance like? I think this is a little bit of a curveball question. What we want to think about is here is how can we answer this in a genuine and honest way? And the, the same kind of relates to what is your biggest weakness? There were so many bad or really kind of, I would say disingenuous or dishonest answers with this. So, you know, for example, if I answer this question, what is your work-life balance like? I'd say my work-life balance life is good, but invariably I do spend a lot of time working. I spend, I, I'm up early, I get to the office early, I won't leave until the job's done. And generally during the week, I don't have an enormous amount of bandwidth for much else. I might have dinner, I might have conversations with a few people, might do a bit of reading or a bit of study in the evening and then it's a rinse and repeat. But I find that I can really make up for that time by setting aside quality time for people who, you know, I, my loved ones at the weekend, making sure I do events for myself, I take care of myself, I eat well, I sleep well, and I make sure that I've got, I have, you know, good, a good number of breaks throughout the day so that I can really come back and commit to my work with uh, that ability to focus deeply and to really work well and produce results. Now you'll notice there, there isn't, there isn't really an example in there, but I think a lot of, a lot of us, we may have found that our, essentially our work-life challenges by, changes based upon external circumstances which tend to be deadlines right so if you think about cramming for exams or that time when you're kind of going it'll be fine it'll be fine holy crap and then you just work for 72 hours straight to try and get something done so it, we're really trying to look for somebody who has some kind of balance and has the ability in a sense to kind of switch on and switch off i think that's already always a really good characteristic for somebody to have because I certainly can reflect in my 20s, I spent a lot of time switched on, but couldn't switch off, so I would end up burning out. Whereas I think maybe as now I'm a bit older, I find it easier to kind of switch on, get the work done, and then as soon as I'm home, switch off. Don't think about work at all. So how about some other questions? What's the biggest setback that you have ever experienced? Again, a nice question, and I always try and deal with questions that are a little bit uh, less likely to come up or that you may not have heard of before, because I think that's more useful. We can all find out you know, the most common competency questions and straight face questions. So a big setback that you've experienced, you need to think that this is a negative question in the sense that you know, we have this, um, you know, we have this, I wouldn't call it a failure, but a setback. So this is obviously like sad face, right? But what you've got to think about this is, you know, sort of, this is you, you have a failure or a setback, and then just like I have had many, I learned a lesson, right? So it's about outlining and saying, this happened, it was because of this, you're not gonna outline a horrendous failure or some horrific mistake that you don't, that you don't particularly wanna talk about, but you're gonna talk about a time, maybe it's slightly missing a deadline or underestimating the amount of work that you have to do. And then the important and key thing to draw away from this is what, what's the lesson that I'm going to learn from this? What will I take from this experience so I can put it into some new experiences? Um, if you're late for half an hour on the first day of work, what would you do? This, is, this would not be my favorite question to come up. And I think, again, with anything, any kind of unexpected circumstance so you've got to think this is like oh what if you made a mistake what if there was a change um, so you know basically a negative circumstance what's really important here is communication feedback and learning yeah so if you're, if you're late, you're late, right? So the first thing that you do is you call the office and say, I'm really sorry I'm late because of X, Y, Z. Then you would probably get a bit of feedback 
Depending on the context, it may not be very good feedback, it might be negative feedback, it might be like, look, do you even want this job? Are you taking it seriously? But sometimes, you know, we give that feedback to other people just to make them understand and to make them learn. And of course you learn, you learn, you make sure that that doesn't happen again, whether it be, as a, as a wonderful mentor of mine said, when I turned up late one day to meet him for coffee, he just said to me, you're late because you left late. He said, look, I don't, I don't care if the train doesn't work, the bus doesn't work, if you, your leg was, <coughs> your leg fell off, just leave earlier. And it seems really simplistic, but he was right. And I'd like to say from then on, but at least in recent years, I always make sure that I much rather be half an hour early than half an hour late. So you just use that and sort of loop that back in. And I think that pretty much brings us towards the end of talking about BDO <coughs> and the Amber Jack assessment. I'm really just thinking about two motivation questions and then practicing those strength and competency questions. And again, like I say, every video, every time, make sure that you practice over and over again. Don't sit there and read a script, practice a script, rewrite a script, practice, record yourself. The best practice is the one that's most like the real thing. And if you can get feedback from someone, get feedback from them. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to know more about us and what we do, check us out in the description below. You can find us at jobreadyenglish.com. Pop me an email at mike at jobreadyenglish.com. Like, comment and subscribe and let me know what video you'd like us to put up next. Bye.